Okay. There you are. All right. We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's on. It's on. Let's go! Ah. With more medical emergencies. Mate. Is that a little bit better now? And more cameras. Trying to turn you on? Yes, turn me on, girl, turn me on. We're taking you back to the heart of the action. Sharp scratch of cobwood. There are some new faces. This could potentially be quite hazardous. <laughs> and some old friends. Seriously? Oh, oh. that's disgusting. <laughs> Body-mounted cameras record every moment. Nice and slow. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. Caroline, can you hear me, sweet? Okay, that is a chunk. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crews from West Midlands Ambulance Service. I reckon you could do this job, you know. Woohoo! Take a big deep breath and hold it for me. <laughs> Never a wasted moment when I'm being paid by the ambulance service. As they deal with 3,000 emergency calls each day. There's nothing to worry about. That's not too bad, Petal, is it? No. You are eager to come into the world, aren't you, Chicky? Step inside the ambulance. I love this job. I don't think I could date within the ambulance service. I don't know. I don't like bald and beard. I like hair and beard. <laughs> I think bald and beard just feels like you need to just turn the head upside down. <laughs> It depends. They'd have to be like a pretty special person, wouldn't they, really? To make you want to like date someone who you potentially could be working with. Jason Statham or Gerard Butler? Jason Statham. And a bit of stubble. Yeah, but oh, yes. Shay, that's not bald though, is it? I don't know, but it's sexy, sexy. It's that's like a rugged yeah. look. He could see me, show me a good time, kind of rugged. There's a number of people I wouldn't mind dating, but they probably know who they are as well. I know, but I'm married, mate. No. Uh, sorry, not oh, really my type. Uh -huh. but... We're now going to an unconscious female outside in West Brom. Nine 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 road. Paramedic Grant Porter and technician Lewis Prosser are eight hours into their 12-hour day shift. They've been called to a woman found unconscious on her patio. The female, 40s, normal breathing, able to be laying aside. Yep. Able to run aside, could have a patient at the back of the bungalow. Right. When they arrive, they find the patient slumped, motionless on the ground. Hello there. Hello. Did she say anything, was it? Uh, didn't. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sweet, can you open your eyes for me? Can you open your eyes? Can you wake up? It's the ambulance. Somebody's called. Can you remember where you are? Can you talk to us? A neighbour made the 999 call as the patient's husband is at work. Lewis notices the woman's wearing a medical identification bracelet. Oh, I've got a medial alert bracelet, yeah. Seizures. Can you open your eyes for us, Caroline? Oh, well done, thank you. If Caroline has fallen to the ground during a seizure, there's a risk she could have serious injuries. Do you know where you are? Caroline, I'm showing a light into your eyes, OK? It's going to be a bit bright. Sat, SATS 99, heart rate 89. All right, we're going to do your blood pressure, Caroline. So it's going to go tight on your arm. All right, my sweet. That's healthy. You think you knocked yourself out? Hello, sweet. You OK? Hello. You're on the bench, last thing you remember. Yeah. This one next to us. Have you had a headache? Do you suffer with epilepsy, you say? 
seizures, how often does that happen? Does it hurt anywhere? Have you got any pain anywhere? You don't know. Don't doesn't hurt at the moment. Is that this one underneath? Yeah. Okay. We were more concerned about her head because it was concrete. Yeah. We were on like slabs, and she'd come off the bench apparently. It was quite a high bench, so kind of look for C spine and head injuries and spinal problems from hitting the floor. Any pain down your back? Any pain down here? Not there. Not here. How about here? A little bit where? The big door. Where I'm touching? Yeah. Because you've got that pain there, because it, it, it's right on your spine, that pain is. Ouch. Right there. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to press it. Because you've got that pain there, we're going to have to put you on one of their special boards in case you've done any more damage. OK. When you turn up, the last thing you want to do is make somebody any worse than what they already are. So you kind of put your kiddie gloves on a little bit. If she's got an unstable fracture, you could sever her spinal cord. If it's lower, it can give paralysis of limbs. If it's upper, sometimes it stops people breathing, stop organs working. You know, the consequences are really quite severe. <coughs> so it's hurting here still? It's a bit curved out both there. You ready? We've got a roll, we? We're going to put this yellow board behind your back yeah. and then we're going to slowly roll you onto it. All right? One, two, three. Ow. So in the back of your neck, have you got any pain at all? Sometimes the bowel hurts. Anything now where I'm doing it, though? I don't think so. You're not sure? I'm not too sure. Got to be sure, Caroline. We'll, what we'll do, Caroline, because you've already got the pain in the centre of your back, yeah. we'll put our little collar on just to be on the safe side then. OK. OK. okay. I'm just going to support your head slightly, just slightly. Grant's worried that Caroline may have damaged her spine, so he needs to completely immobilise her neck. Is that comfortable? It's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but is that OK? OK at the moment. OK at the moment. I'm sorry. Sorry for what? This is their job. This is what we do for a living. Just like that. Ready, steady, lift. OK. Now, this is going to be a bit bumpy, OK? Where do you come from? S2. Well, he come from Cozy Way. But as you can probably tell by his accent, Lewis doesn't come as close. Once inside the ambulance, Grant and Lewis can examine Caroline further. And it seems like the effects of her fit have passed. I've got you on my holidays in two weeks. Weren't they anywhere nice? Vernon on sea. Vernon on sea. Yeah. Not Wales. Um, you want us rescheduled? Near Western. Near Western. We go by Wales then, we go to London, no then. Oh, I sounded no. Yeah, cold and breezy. Yeah, that's Wales. Cold and breezy. That's the, that's the Welsh experience for you. How is your vision at the moment? You said it was OK outside, is it still OK? I can see you too, yeah. Unfortunately. Too nice to shoot then. So your vision is still bad then, right? We've solved that one. <laughs> Are you both married? No, 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 no. No. We both in I'm engaged. And I've got two cats. So Lewis has got cats. Well I didn't want to get cats and she wanted cats, so we compromised. And you got cats. I got two cats. <laughs> right then, should we take you to hospital then? <sighs> Caroline's seizures began eight years ago. Despite happening regularly, doctors still don't know the cause. How are you feeling now, Caroline? Because I know it's a bit uncomfortable lying on your back. Are you OK at the moment? Caroline? Caroline? You might need to get in the back. You might have to stop a second. I think she might be about to fit again. All right. Just three minutes into the journey, Caroline has started to fit again. 
Grant is extremely concerned as Caroline has suddenly become unresponsive. Can you hear me, sweet? Grant doesn't know if this is a seizure or as a result of the fall. She was having an absence seizure, that's all. Absence? Yeah. An absence seizure is a brief loss of consciousness and should last just a few seconds. But with Caroline not responding, Grant is worried this could have longer lasting effects on her brain. Do you want a blue light? Though? Yeah, just go, because we're only in the corner, aren't we? Yeah. Caroline, I'm not sure if you can hear me, my love. But we're just going to take you into hospital a bit quicker because you've started to have another seizure for us. All right, it's going to be a bit noisy. You've always got to make a decision when you get to tricky jobs like that. Are we, are we going to stay and play or are we just going to get, get in and go? And you can do all sorts of fancy things with different patients, but what's the point when the care is up the road? Caroline is still not responding. She needs to be seen by doctors in A&E straight away. Uh, four nine. Grant radios ahead to let the hospital know they're close. Sorry, can you just pass an alert to Samwell um, General for us? The patient started to fit in the back. She's having an absent seizure, and we're about a minute and a half away. This will enable a specialist team to be ready to treat Caroline as soon as she arrives. Back to seizure, a minute and a half away. And patients having an absolute seizure event. Caroline's going to put a bit of oxygen for you. Right. Caroline, we're pulling up now at the hospital. We were that close. All right. Caroline, we're going into hospital now, OK? I believe she fitted to get all the way back in there. I think that must be what she has, you know. She stabs and seizures and then has these repeated falls. Well, the neighbour said she'd had about eight or nine in the two years she'd been living there. What, just stabs and seizures and falls well, to the floor? Where, where they found them outside. <laughs> Did you hear me just suddenly go quiet? Uh, I, I heard you just start going, uh, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> Caroline, don't do this to me. Dimitri Holloway and Michael Anslow are waiting for their next call and discussing a topic close to every paramedic's heart. To make my tea, I have to have um, no milk. It must be wheat tea with lemon and sugar. Lemon and sugar? Lemon, sugar uh, and wheat. And it's, it's quite nice. It's quite it's supposed to be quite healthy for you. Um, yeah, I like the smell of these herbal teas. They're quite nice. Um, I just find whenever I've tried tea in the past, I end up having to put loads of sugars in it um, to make it bearable. You might like it one day. Oh. What is it? Uh, so what are we going to? An 84-year-old male who's got cardiac chest pain, irregular heartbeat and pain under left arm. This is a high priority call. The patient needs urgent medical attention. Hello. Good. Yes. Hello. All right. Is that you? Is that your friend or my friend. your friend? Okay. The patient, Gordon, lives in sheltered accommodation. Sam has been neighbours with him for two years. Recently, he's noticed a change in Gordon's health. You say he's hearing impaired. It's the last four days, he's gone down death. Okay. The ambulance crew's body-worn cameras record everything as it happens. Hi, Gordon. Gordon. Hello. Is that, some, is that something new? I can't hear that, I think. He's been He's gone to stand there hands. four days. OK. He's been to the hospital. How do you, how do you fit? Can you lip read? The pills. No. Have you got a piece of paper somewhere? 
The only way to communicate to is to write everything down. Three weeks to go. Are you listening? Yes. Yeah. 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 Three weeks ago, I had lost all my hearing completely. Seven o'clock in the morning, I couldn't hear a thing. OK. Ah, yes, glasses, that might be good. <laughs> Sam, what's, what's he told, what's Gordon I'm told you? Gordon asked me. Dimitri asks if he can check his yeah. blood pressure. Yeah. Gordon had a triple heart bypass 17 years ago. Ever since, he's monitored his own. Aha. Uh -huh. Blood pressure. Ooh, that's high. OK. Irregular heartbeat came up. Uh -huh. And I got the pain. Left yeah. 90% of our job is communicating yeah. with the patient and you know, comforting them at the worst time in their life. We can't communicate with someone. It makes it a lot more difficult for us to, A, do the job, and B, you know, be there for the patient as a, as a clinician. We'll do another heart trace, more stickers on your chest, OK? Because we're... Pa yeah. Yeah. I've done I know. I found out very, very, very irregular. Suddenly, Gordon starts to deteriorate. The ECG confirms their worst fears. Gordon is having a major heart attack. Yeah, we'll need to um, treat him for a STEMI, mate, because he's having a STEMI. A STEMI is the most serious type of heart attack there is. One of Gordon's major arteries is blocked. Can we pop a, a needle into your arm to give you some medication for the pain? I've got... Michael medicine. needs to work fast, but he doesn't want to panic Gordon, or he could make okay. things worse. Yeah. OK, thank you. OK, spray, pain, OK? The spray will open up Gordon's blood vessels, helping to get as much blood as possible to his heart to prevent major damage to the heart muscle. That's it, that's lovely. Dimitri takes Gordon's neighbour Sam outside to let him know what's happening. He's having a heart attack, OK? Don't alarm him. No. We're going to get him to hospital, get him seen to... Don't worry, don't, don't alarm him, cos the worst thing you can do is panic them. No. Oh, and we'll, we'll do our best. I'll just tell Julie, yeah. his daughter, as you're taking him just, to hospital. That's it. You're a, very, you're a very good friend. Yeah. Hiya, heart and lung. I've got a patient um, who is having a STEMI, an inferior STEMI. Um, Gordon's going to need a I cardiac team ECG ready and waiting for him as soon as he reaches hospital. So Michael phones in an alert. OK, he's a male. He's 84. Uh, chest pain. He's had it for the past three hours. Um, that's all that we're aware of at the moment. Gordon's condition was life-threatening, which we really needed to do something about. When it shows on the ECG that the patient is having a heart attack and they're at high risk of going into cardiac arrest, death is sort of nearly round the corner. So you've got to up the game and, and almost prepare for that happening. Okay. Might be a bit high. Cheers, Sam. We'll do the best we can. It's less than three miles to the hospital. Gordon's starting to struggle. Go fuzzy. A bit fuzzy. Okay. okay. Michael needs to check where Gordon's pain is. So close. Can you point? So close. Under the arm. Here. Yeah. Okay. Having to communicate via a notepad and pen is adding more pressure to an already critical situation. I don't know. You're okay. A steady pain. A steady pain. Steady. A very steady pain. Okay. I'm getting so confused, young man. All right. Don't, don't worry. Gordon's discomfort and pain indicate that his heart is being starved of oxygen. 
housing. Um, he keeps sort of going a bit blacking out with his eyes. But... Gordon will go straight to the cardiac team for emergency treatment. Gordon's okay. Just ahead. Turn right. It was difficult, wasn't it? Because he couldn't couldn't um, hear us, especially in an emergency situation when someone's having a heart attack and you need kind of quick answers. And then it's difficult. But I think we improvise well with the the notepad. I'd love to hear back from him how he does, and for for him to hear us. For <laughs> that would be nice. Bear with me, this is spider there. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I can't stand these bloody things. Oh, There's two things. That's the tiniest one. Mate, I, I, I do not care. Any creepy crawlies he doesn't really like? No, 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 creepy crawlies don't bother me. I just don't like spiders, <laughs> man. Like, there's... Uh, they have no use. They have no use and they freak me out. I'm not scared of anything this way. It's Apart from mouth spiders. cheese. Yeah, mouth, <laughs> mouth cheese is minging. And spiders. Got it. No, I haven't got pick up on there, sorry. Paramedic Loz Horobin and trainee Michelle McNulty are halfway through their 12 hour shift. Uh, patient is fine and Seriously? Yes, that's all we say, thank you. What's that song? The spider that swallowed this fly, perhaps she'll die. The <laughs> the what, the what, there's, a, there's a song. <laughs> Don't look at me like that, there is a song. What have you taken today? Right, I'm gonna have to YouTube it because I'm making myself sound crazy, but it's definitely a song. I'm I'm hoping for a spider this big that was green and yellow. And Tarantula. Pink. Yeah. Hello, all right. <clears throat> Hello. Waiting for them is 24-year-old Mark, who's come to the UK to study. Hello. Hi. Um, is there anywhere more private we can go? Oh, oh right. it's, it's not. It's anywhere back there. I think I'll be better. You're feeling a bit yeah. better? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you live, Mark? Uh, just uh, in the same accommodation, you know, the brick building. Oh, uh, OK, so you're at university here? Yeah. yeah. Right, OK. And you've just come over now? Yeah. OK. Thank you. You go through, Mark. Thank you. Right, then. Yeah. Right, then, Mark, what's been happening then? Uh, I, I was bitten by, I think, a spider. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the arm, and it looks... Worse compared to yesterday because I, I, I popped it. I right. had that time to pop it. OK, do you want to take your shirt yeah, off? Michelle needs a closer look to see if his injury was caused by a spider. You say the, the spider bit you there? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, I think it, it bit me uh, one week ago. Oh, right. Did you see this spider? No. Are you not sure me. what's bitten you then? I'm not too sure, but it's not the first time I'm bitten by a spider. What, did you just pop it or did you just squeeze it like a spider? Yes, yeah, squeeze it. But that hurt? Yeah. Okay. More than yesterday. OK, because it came through to us that you were short of breath. Yeah, because when I, I, showed, the, I showed it to the pharmacist, I just didn't feel well when I saw it. Oh, uh, so it just kind of made you feel faint just looking yeah. at it. Do you suffer with anything? Any medical illnesses or...? Uh, depression. OK. Yeah. Do you take tablets for it? Uh, not anymore because uh, I've run out of, me of antidepressants. And okay. as I can't get to an appointment, you know, I can't get yeah. to a prescription. OK. Mark speaks five languages and graduated last year, but has struggled to find yeah. work. Do you know where the hospital is? Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. There's an urgent care centre where there's doctors there 24 hours. Right. And they'll be able to see you about your arm tonight. Oh. 
Initially, when we saw the bite, I wouldn't have thought it was a life-threatening emergency. It didn't look anything too serious. It wasn't like, red in flames, and there was no immediate cause for concern. But it was something that would need to be treated. Where are you from originally, Mark? Uh, France. I was going to say I could. Yeah, I don't know. To say like a couple of little things. Yeah. <laughs> are you going to go back to France? No. No. Yeah. Uh, I'm working at Fen Stretcher, but only uh, four hours a week yeah. in general, so... I'm looking for a job, a full-time job. Yeah. But nothing. You could um, just print some CVs and take them around. That's what I did last year. Yeah. But, I mean, I have a better CV now. I mean, a more professional CV. Yeah. You know, I've been on an antidepressant because I couldn't find anything. So I don't want to experience that again. That's why uh, yeah. I, now I apply uh, online only. It's really difficult, isn't it, to get a job these no. days? And Just talking to Mark, I did feel sorry for him. Um, obviously, he's at uni, he lives by himself. I think it's really important that you give them some help and support and just reassuring him that obviously with his depression, that he's doing the right thing, he will be OK, and providing some conversation for him, I think was really helpful. All right, all the best, Mark. Nice Thank to you meet you, and good luck with the job hunting. All right. OK. My French speaking and listening exam in Year 9, Mrs Morton, my French teacher, found it really funny, because I started, like, Bonjour, je m'appelle Laz. J'adore le gâteau au chocolat. <laughs> so it's just like introducing myself. Hi, I'm Liza. I love chocolate cake. It was literally my introduction to my speaking and listening. And she just smiled. And then obviously I went on to say good stuff. Because I got a B. <laughs> Bonjour, je m'appelle Liza, c'est toi? J'ai mal à la tête. Il pleut. It's raining. <laughs> I think people have, like, forgotten how to drive today. Get out the way, it's an ambulance! <laughs> what the f***? <laughs> On really? Oh, you yeah, idiots. Stop. Someone stop. Let's stop next to each other. Yeah, you keep going, mate. Well done. Some people should not be on the road. Oh. What is this car doing? Well, whatever he thinks he's doing, he's also having a good vape whilst he's doing it. All I want is people to pull over to the side and stop. That's the best thing to do. People. Just people. Two fifteen on Saturday afternoon and Michael Anslow and Dimitri Holloway are on their way to another emergency. And it's for an adult, assault, who has blood on towel, query coming from patient. Male was holding a knife, but police on scene have advised it's not a stabbing. The call has come in from the police. It's to a domestic incident. A man has allegedly been attacked by his girlfriend. That's a bit weird. I haven't had many assaults for a while. And I find that all jobs tend to come in all, all at once on the same ship. In three. Yeah. Let's go next to the police car. That's always a safe bet. Personally, when I see um, police required on the screen, I get a little bit nervous. When we're going into these jobs, we, we don't know if it's a volatile situation and, and what we're about to walk into. You've got to take a step back and remember that our safety is paramount, that we can't help somebody if, if we're put into danger ourselves. The police are already at the house, but there's no sign of the patient. Hi. Hello. Hello. I asked him on the way up. He's, no. He's walked off. Oh, right, OK. Um, he's got a one-inch cut to his right hand, highly intoxicated, right. crack heroin, um, okay. refusing cooperation with us, oh. refusing to go up to hospital. How did you do that? Knife. Self-harm or...? Uh, no, well, one second he's saying the female's done it. OK. The next he's saying that he's done it himself. Right. And he's just up and down, changeable. OK. So he's got a big yeah, white we... towel, which is now red, so he's quite okay. easy to identify. Yeah. But 30 seconds later, their patient reappears. Hiya. My name's Michael, this is Dimitri, right. Um, 
OK. Would you like us to give it a clean and, and see how we go? OK. Should we go in the ambulance? Yeah, just bear with us two seconds. I'll open the back up. OK. You having a cigarette first? Just be careful you don't get it infected. Can we pop a dressing on your hand as you are there? The man is less interested in his bleeding hand and more interested in getting back into his girlfriend's house. We can perhaps speak to the police and try and get something sorted for you, but let's... The day before, the man says he spent over £100 on food at the supermarket, and now he wants it back. But the patient is so angry, he doesn't want anyone's help. Will you hold on to this bandage? Will you... And he was quite a difficult patient to assess and treat because he was so worked up about the situation. It was a large wound um, and there was a risk of infection. So we, we wanted to take him to hospital and it was frustrating because he, he wouldn't let us help him. OK, well, the best we can do is probably just stay, stay around and if he decides to come back, he comes back because I'm not prepared to treat him when he's in that state. But within minutes, the man is back. Where am I going to cook here? I, I want my cheese and my bread, so I can have my sandwiches. I, I'll give you the bread. I didn't want it. What, with beans? I was supposed to eat the beans. His hand is absolutely More pouring beans. with blood. Pouring Michael blood. and Dimitri need to get the man into the back of the ambulance to treat his wound, but he's still not playing ball. Can you squeeze that tightly for no, me? Because no, it's dripping I can't, everywhere. I can't squeeze. Right. Can you have a seat on here for me? Right. He'll hold it high up for me. With Michael finally having got their patient off the street. Dimitri can now start to deal with the injury to his hand. Yeah, let's just get this. I'm just going to give this a quick rinse with this swab as well. All right. This might sting a little bit more than it than the other ones. All right. Sorry if it hurts, mate. It's just not. I can't feel nothing. In anything in in your hand. Nothing, nowhere, nothing. Right. Nothing. Keep, keep, okay. Well, no, I can't okay. Feel keep it still, for it. Sorry. Sorry. But just as the patient starts to calm down, an update from the police sets him off again. Okay. No. In here. Cheese. Is that why I said that's what I bought? The girl has got all my stuff. She bought. No, 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 right. no. Right, no. this is just for tonight. I'm going to the police station for the statement now. She's going to be here. That's going to be here for you for when you're done, OK? Right, I'm going to the police station. OK, we'll see you up there then. No, you ain't kicking me, you said. The patient disappears to argue with the police officer, with his wound still dripping. Pop yourself down on the on the bed just for me. Just put it on, just put it on. It's not clean. It's not clean. It's it's covered it's in about with a statement. It, it's going to take a statement off you, all right. He said he won't do it. You're still dripping, so just keep that. If we're not careful, we risk losing your hand through an infection or you passing out because you've... What I want to do is make you better. OK? That's all we're here for. We're not here for the spot of the police. We're here to, just to help you. But I'm because of your hand. I know, mate. Can you spread... Do your hand like this as you did before. Keep that. Finally, they manage to bandage the wound. Do you stick this up in the air? Mind your head on, on the bar. Sit forward for me. I feel dizzy, mate. I know. Right, do you want to lie down? I want to go on, If you've got a reduced sensation in your hand and you've got tingling, that's yeah. not a good sign. What we'd recommend with that is to go up to the hospital to have it properly cleaned. Yeah, I'll go up to the hospital and I'll walk up there. Why can't we take you up? It's better that you go to the hospital right Why? now. Why? Because you're hand But I want all my stuff out of the house as soon as possible. You're not going to have a hand. But with the man still refusing to go to hospital, there's little more Michael and Dimitri can do. Jan's going to drop off. So we wanted to clean the wound, get it dressed and get him seen to. Um, and unfortunately, we were unable to, to do that. It is stressful, but it is also quite common. So at the same time, we're, we're almost used to it. It's a bit, a bit frustrating when you can't help someone, especially if they're going against your advice. I think you forgot your food. See ya. What, what? 
I want all my stuff which I'm allowed to take out that house. All my stuff, because it's my house. house. But the patient's aggressive and agitated behaviour has become too much for the police. The way it is, you're going to get locked up to prevent a breach of the peace. Yes. yes. Right, right. Why would I have a gun? Why would I have a gun? Is there somebody at the Nick that could look at his hand? Yeah, to be fair, we'd probably go and guys at hospital, I think. OK, yeah. It's now the police have arrested the patient, Michael and Dimitri can do no more for him. OK, thank you. All right. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers, guys. My Michael, I think you might have to go back and clean. It's a little bit sad that he just doesn't want to help himself because he's more bothered about the material it's, stuff. He's shopping, yeah. And his, his hand can get himself a really nasty infection. There's not much he can do. He's a little bit unpredictable, isn't he? Very. That is a big camper van to have outside your house, isn't it? I'm going to get one of those when I'm, old, when I'm old and grey and ready to see the world. Where are you going to go with it? North Wales. <laughs> Who would you go? Hot shot. Big man. I'm just seeing the world. Where are you going to go? North Wales. North Wales part of the world. I could go to Scotland. You could. I could go to Ireland. You could. Go anywhere in England. I could up the, um, up the channel and go to Europe if they let me in. I'm just wondering if I can do English subtitles for you. Hey, that's rude. <laughs> it's 7.15 p.m and Tina Spittle and Donna Parcell are on an emergency call. It's to a toddler who's unconscious. I don't drive like this very often. Hopefully, yeah. It's going to be a nothing when we get there. Fingers crossed. I don't like unwell children because they're just, I don't know, it's not right. As a mum, you feel everything that that mum is feeling and how frightening that can be and the reality of what could happen. My little boy had concussion when he was only five and you try and put it to the back of your mind, no, he's fine, he's fine. And then you know that there's not something right. It's terrifying. Waiting for them are baby Cleo and her worried mum and gran. That's a big dog. What's happened? She had a bit of a fall this morning. Like, you this know, morning. Really small. Okay. Hello, baby sweet. Cares. Hello. She, she was fine. She tried off. She didn't cry. She was just crawling around playing with the kids. OK. Yeah, I don't think anything of it. Yeah. Come back. She's just been asleep all day until I woke up for her dinner about, about three. Hello. And then she went straight back to sleep again. Right. But every time she's awake today, she's just wanting me to hold her. Right, OK. And I picked her up, and as I've picked her up, she's gone, like, oh, so nice. really sleepy, and then just threw up everywhere. Well, she's she's each she's each Cleo yeah. fell over and bumped her head this morning while she was at the baby clinic. She was taking her first steps. Hello, hello. Oh, yeah, there we are, being sick again. All right, princess. OK, here we go. Look, she, oh, I'm, right, right, I'm not in the right she place for you to be sick, am I? She's going to have to project all vomit she's everywhere in a minute. Yeah, again. All, all right, right, all right, right princess. All right. Brilliant. Oh, so, apart from being, being, being quite sleepy and cuddly, this is not normal. It was after that. And normally it's like yeah. laughing, yeah. jockey, yeah. especially yeah. as a granddad. Yeah. Okay. Cleo's mum, Shannon, had her checked at the clinic and she was sent home with the all clear. But she was told if she was sick more than three times to take her to A and D. Does she look pale to you? Because I, I don't she know what she looks like normally. She's normally quite olive skinned. Okay. Yeah. She's normally got a good colour. Yeah. She's but since Cleo came home, she's been very drowsy and has continued to vomit. From her feet. It could we take this. She's ended up with a diary and vomiting, but, but you know we can't take the chance because she's had a head injury. Baby Cleo will need to be taken to hospital for further observation. Let's play it safe. If we go up there, the worst thing is. You've had a bit of a wasted couple of hours just to know that she's all right. Anyway. But at a young age that Cleo was, 
she wouldn't be able to tell us that she's got a headache or that the lights are hurting. So it becomes a guessing game to a certain extent that you have to take those precautions. So we take her in, make certain that everything's OK. There we go. Hello. Here we are. We're there. Oh, we're there. Oh, dear me. Mummy's still here, I promise. We haven't got rid of Mummy. Can you get your knees round? Yeah. There we go. Bye-bye, beautiful. Cleo normally only naps for an hour, but today she slept for eight hours. It's worried her mum. Are you going to go to sleep? She's not like this. No. She'll usually talk to you and scream at you. <laughs> OK. She wants to hold you. Aw, Leo, then. I can't pick you up. You have to stay there. But you'll be fast asleep in a minute, won't you? Because that's what normally happens. I've just gone to pray Matt in a in a bag. Yeah, yeah. And I heard everyone go, oh! Like, and there was all like, get up and there. And you on the floor. It was just, huh? So it wasn't like she'd like got onto the chair and fell off. She literally just went to oh, get okay. up the chair yeah. and turned. Yeah. Happy to go, mate. Oh, yeah. She wasn't knocked out or anything like that, no? No, but she just, she just didn't cry. Hit, she just hit her head, off hit her head and okay. sat back up and tried to crawl out. And that's when I went to, I went to pick her up. They arrive at hospital. Baby Cleo will now be handed over to the paediatric team. So little baby Cleo. Cutie, cutie, cutie. You know, if it was my little one, I wouldn't rest because like you say, you just don't know. And I'd rather play it safe and know that she's okay. Caroline, who had two fits in one day, was closely monitored in hospital. Fortunately, she hadn't injured her back when she fell. Despite having seizures for the last eight years, brain scans have still not revealed what causes them. But Caroline was well enough to go on her caravan holiday with her husband to Burnham on Sea. After suffering a major heart attack, Gordon spent five days in intensive care and then went home. Sadly, six weeks later, he passed away peacefully in his sleep. Recent graduate Mark has made a full recovery from his suspected spider bite. He's since been proactive with his job search and hopes to build a career in linguistics. 999 road activated. And nine-month-old baby Cleo was a real worry for mum and gran. She was kept in hospital overnight and closely monitored. However, her head bump was not serious and Cleo's sickness was likely caused by a general bug. She's now in good health and back to her perky self. Are you ready for that best sound all day? After 12 and a bit hours. Give it to me. Are you ready? Give it to me. Oh. 